Alright, so my client wanted a totem style. He, he discussed the animals with me. Uh, the tree was still standing alive. Um, we had some fallers come out and, and they left 22 feet of stump here. It's about as high as I could go. But uh, originally planned black panther on the top and then a deer and a peacock in the totem. Now, I don't follow a certain ritualistic or uh, tribal openings. Um, my own style of technique, as you can see, it's a uh, concept. But uh, after planning it, talking it over, um, you see the platform I had to build, and I, I worked it off all of scaffolding, which was about 18 feet in the air, um, starting off at the top. Saws up top, maneuvering back and forth, up and down, moving the scaffolding around. Now the, the power point of this piece is the Black Panther, and so it was carved completely three-dimensional all the way around. And uh, uh, tying in with the other totems, the peacock and the deer, you can see the, the creative line work that is the background. And then the foreground, the animals, I've darkened to bring them off of the background so they don't get lost in each other. But this is also finished. We've got a finish on it now, which will help the log cure over the next year or so, and then can be hard coated after that. But uh, the wood is dug for. It's a uh, building material, so it's quite the stout wood, pretty tough wood. Um, it's not what I prefer to carve with, but wood is wood, so. Um, you can see I left a lot of the bark on it. And these animals are a deep two-dimensional or a deep relief carve. And uh, with the flow of everything, I just finished up the darkening. And uh, I'm pretty happy with it. It came together beautifully. And I believe my, uh, my client will also be very pleased. I got to take the platform down and clean up and then we'll get a final, final look at it. And that's what I'm looking forward to. Duck fur is a little bit tougher, especially with the knots, the hard spots. It tends to chip and uh, want to flake and, and get little chunks. prepare for it you can take a little bit less off with the chainsaw and take it off with the sanding that way you don't do too much damage in where you're wanting to keep the wood but it's one of those where uh, it's a concept at first you start at the top work from one to the next try to keep them flow in mind climbing down going out to the road taking a good look Climbing back up, climbing down, <laughs> getting different saws, moving the scaffolding. So it's a timely process all together. I'm just amazed at that panther came out of the same piece of wood. Yeah, when you're either this far away from the piece of wood or, you know, out in the road trying to get a good look at it from a distance, it's hard to judge. you got to take a lot of mental notes. Kind of imagine it from below, go up, get this close to it, and then make that happen. So it can be a little tricky. I really like that peacock tail. That yeah. is really pretty. And that too was just a concept, you know, a technique I come up with to, to kind of bring out the detail from the distance more than up close. And uh, you hope for the best, but it did. It turned out really nice. Feathers are beautiful. It pronounces itself. Very nice. I'm definitely glad to be at this point and be done. <laughs> yeah. It wore me out. It serves for a good night's sleep for sure. Oh, yeah. So you just painted it today. Yeah. What what'd you put on it? I put a, a Mesmer's UV Plus. It's a deck finish. It's a good product. It, uh, it'll help control the wood. The wood was uh, fresh cut right before I got to it, so it was real green. It has a lot of moisture in it. So on a piece like this, you kind of seal it up, 
it'll disperse the water and dry out slower, which helps with cracking. And then uh, down the road a year or so, about a, a year into it, or maybe a whole summer season, a year and a half, then you apply another coat, and then you can put a hard coat on it, which will bring the gloss and, and bring that out. And that'll basically uh, cap it for, uh, for a long time.